podcast that also talks about Torchwood. You like Torchwood. I understand that most of the hubs of Torchwood have been uh, destroyed or closed down or mysteriously disappeared over the calendar years, but uh, we're lucky because actually right here today is the hub of Torchwood because we have Torchwood here. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the members of Torchwood. First off, there is still a shrine to Yanto Jones in Cardiff after his tragic death in Children of Earth. He's played wonderfully by Gareth David Lloyd. Yeah, I actually maintain that shrine. <laughs> Can I sit? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Good party last night. Who was there? <laughs> Who was at the Game of Thrones party? Never mind. <laughs> Next up, the real backbone of the hub of Torchwood, Gwen Cooper herself, Eve Miles. Don't sit on that name. Uh, look, I'm going to bring it up now. I feel a bit claustrophobic in here. So what, what I need is something bigger. Hello. And last but not least, his character is about five billion years old, but he does not look a day over 35. Captain Jack Harkness himself, John Barrowman. Eve, I've got something bigger for you. <laughs> and it ain't a room. Hello, Calgary! Woo! Woo! Uh! I love you too. Give me your room Thanks, key. I'll Dad. be there in an hour. No, Thanks, you don't. <laughs> Sorry? Thank you very much. All right, everybody get the loves out of the way. Shout them, go. Ooh. <laughs> who, who, who was there last night at the party? It was really good fun. Awesome you had fun. fun. Of course yeah. I had fun. Good. Did you have fun? I had fun. Good. Yeah. yeah. We can't talk about any of it, that's the thing. I have no clue what you're talking about. Good. Good. Just between us. There you go. You know what? I watched, in preparation for this, I watched Children of Earth for the first time. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're well, now you're cutting her off. No, no, no slide see. down, because you're, you're talking upstage, and a rule number one as an actor, never turn your back on the audience. Unless you want something. <laughs> I watched Children of Earth for the first time in four years. You know why? I can't handle it. It's like the Schindler's List of television for me because it was just so intense. And I thought I was going to watch the thing and I'd go, oh, this will be fine. Four years have passed. And at like the end of episode three and four, I'm going. <sighs> Did you realize you were making such intense, wonderful television when you were shooting that thing? Actually, we thought it was a children's program we were going to be making. <laughs> no, I, yeah, we did. It was uh, one of those scripts that, you know, when we talked about the concept and when uh, we realized about the, uh, uh, the 456 and also uh, what they were doing to the children, that they were sucking the life out of them uh, because they were the heroine on their planet, that type of thing, and suspending, you know, there was actually scenes that we had to cut because uh, it was a bit too heavy. For instance, the one where you saw the, uh, the four, five, six, and also the children. This is going to sound so creepy. <laughs> God bless Russell. But a child suspended. We, they wanted to use a real child, not a dummy of one, but to suspend a child from the, the, you know, the room that yeah. it was in and be withdrawn and you know, have the tubes all sticking out of it with this creature just sucking the life out of the child. So it was a really... He's making it up. He's making it up. <laughs> it, 
it was really, really creepy. And then we were like, no, we can't really do that. We're pushing the limit with a dummy, but with right. a real kid, you can't. What about Although your some kids deserve it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about your character then? Because you went through some dark stuff in that whole episode. Yeah, but I've, al I've always said, and it's like, you know, the, uh, Gwen and Yanto, the characters, they always knew that Jack and Yanto, actually, they, they both defended Jack. They didn't always agree or like what he was doing, but they understood why he was doing it. And I've always said that from day one. And when I discussed with Russell things about Jack, he said, he will do anything to save humanity. He will do the darkest things. He will do the, the things that most people, I mean, the fact of the matter was that the whole point of that question that, that you were to ask yourself, if you could save the world, would you give up one of your kin? Would you sacrifice your child? And Jack sacrificed his grandchild to save humanity. People would walk down the street, you know, saying to me, I hated you, but I understand why you did it. I'm like, great, so you got the point, but that was really wrong. Yeah, so, and Bear, the guy who, the little boy who played uh, Jack's uh, uh, grandson. grandson, he was um, at that uh, moment, you know, he would, when we were shooting that sequence where he starts, he said, he said, John, is there something that I can do that can make it more creepy? <laughs> I said, Bear, all you need to do is just start shaking. Just <laughs> shake violently. And he said, okay, and I said, and if you can, try to get a little bit of tears coming out of your eyes and see what happens. And the kid went and did it. And it was amazing, and everybody was gutted and freaked out by it. I'm like, kid, you'll be all right. <laughs> you know how to manipulate. Well, how, Gareth, how, when did, what, how was your reaction when you read the script and turned to the end of day four and went, oh, I'm dead? What? <laughs> Spoilers, Eve, sorry. <laughs> Yamto's dead? Yeah. <laughs> at, at the end of episode four. It was good. It was, I, I was told when, um, just before we were about to sh start shooting, um, that, yeah, it's only five episodes, and uh, you'll be needed for three or four out of the five episodes. Does he go on holiday? <laughs> um, so, so, so actually, w w when I uh, got to episode four and I was still in it, I, I, I was relieved that I got that far, actually. But um, yeah, I, you know, brilliant, brilliant drama. I, 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 was, I, was, I was really happy that um, they went into Yando's background, his home life, to find out wh where he came from, because I, I, I found, as an actor, that that was um, a part of the character I really wanted, wanted to explore. So, you know, g going out after exploring that part of his uh, personality was, uh, was, was all right, you know. Mm -hmm. and, then Dead, there's, and then there's you, Eve. Who, who like plays like a kick-ass hero who's actually carrying a baby. How do you prepare for that sort of thing? Well, I just kind of, on Saturday afternoon, took my daughter, took a gun, got a <laughs> helicopter, a bazooka, and uh, practiced. No. Um, <laughs> I know, I figured that. <laughs> We've now jumped on to Miracle Day, by yeah. the way. I'm wondering, it's all right. It's, um, you know what, y when you read something like that, y you, you kind of picture how you're going to do it, and you don't know how it's going to be until the day. And to film that sequence, I think it was something like three days, John, wasn't it? It was a huge, huge sequence to do, because obviously you can't, you can't carry a baby and shoot a gun. <laughs> the doll. So I had to use a doll. It was the evilest looking doll. I mean, seriously, I had nightmares for, for a very long time because of this doll. I mean, it was... Well, so it, just so you know, the dolls are human-like, but they have black eyes. <laughs> so creepy. So, so that you can superimpose and digitally put in the real human eyes it's on the really TV. It's really creepy. It's ugly. Yeah, it's awful. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was a dream to be given those kind of scenes, and you've just got to go for them 100%, so I hope you liked it. Well... Well, before we move on to the, the miracle day, uh, let's look back to how the whole thing started. Let's go back to something that I'm in, please. Exactly. Because somebody didn't make it to California, I understand, for that shoot. Uh, how, did, how did the whole series start? I mean, obviously, it started with, with your character, uh, John. Well, the series, I mean, gosh, going back eight years, nine years ago, isn't it? More than that. Uh, I mean, it did, well, it started with the birth of Jack on Doctor Who. And uh, what was... 
But what we didn't know is at that time, uh, which we then talked about, and it was related to uh, David, you know, it was related to Doctor Who later that David and David Tennant looking at Gwen through the screen, he said, didn't you have relatives in Cardiff in 18 such and such? And she went, yeah, and it was um, the, the housemaid uh, in the Gelf episode uh, of Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm quite dead. Yeah, yeah. so there, that finally was the connection of where Jack and Gwen kind of came together in the Doctor Who world. But uh, Russell and Julie, I remember going in for my first meeting with Russell and uh, Phil Collinson, and we talked about you know Jack, but then when it was on the, the 7-Eleven bombings in uh, London when I had been told that uh, I was gonna be given Torchwood. And later that week, because uh, Julian Russell came to my cabaret that night, then later that week was the first time that I met Eve. And they did a photo session with us in the basement of the BBC. And uh, we felt like we were shunned into a little room in a corner. And, uh, you know, I, we, ha we brought our own clothes because they had no wardrobe for us. And we did this photo shoot, me in a, a le black leather jacket, you in jeans, and a, like a, a little short jacket yourself. And we took these photographs and we had no clue at that point that it would become you know, what it is today. And uh, actually some of those photographs, we actually refused to sign because they weren't very good. <laughs> I remember um, traveling up on the train knowing that I was gonna meet John Barrowman and uh, I was so excited and um, had no idea he was gay. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> she thought she was in there. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I turned up and I was literally like this. I could shake his hand and kind of, and by the end of it, I'd kind of convinced myself that he was in love with me. <laughs> and I thought, no, I'm going to have to bring this up with, with, with Russell and Julie that there might be problems because John is obviously completely in love with me. And we're going to have to break it to him that I have a boyfriend. Um, and, then, and, then, and then out of the blue, he turned gay. Because he showed up. <laughs> and I didn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> but uh, we, we were then told about the other characters of uh, Yanto, Tosh, and uh, Owen. And uh, we knew that we were going to be a team. And actually, the original concept of the show it was meant to be called Excalibur. And uh, Russell wanted to write Excalibur, be, you know, yeah, it was meant to be called Excalibur. And he wanted to write Excalibur before he got involved in Doctor Who, but the BBC said, no, we want you to do Doctor Who first, then we'll let you write this other show. And then he decided to just change it to Torchwood. And even to this day, people are coming up to me and going, do you realize that Torchwood is Doctor Who and an it's an anagram? <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> you're kidding me, I never knew that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, I interviewed... Um, <laughs> I swore, I'm sorry. <laughs> I interviewed Byrne Gorman on stage in Chicago in November. Finny Bots. Finny Bots. And I asked him, I asked him, I says, are there any anecdotes on set that you can tell uh, in front of a family audience, and he sort of went. Oh. And I said, who's mostly to blame for that? And he said, John Barrowman. So. Yeah, but I have to defend myself here because everybody always blames me, which I'm totally cool with, but they all live vicariously through me. That's exactly what it is. Is that true, Gareth and Eve? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's really, there's really no, I mean, story-wise, we had a great time. Uh, no, uh, don't worry. No, no. no, um, no, no but we, uh, we, we used to do things like we'd have Dirty Friday Nights, what we would call them, or Dirty, Brec dirty Friday Breakfasts. There's loads of people here, John. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people used to think that it wasn't, you know, because a lot of uh, people don't like to watch themselves on television. And I know, you know, some people, but we used to have, parties at 
you know, my place and, and also at Eve's and, you know, we ended up at Garris uh, uh, sometimes and, uh, you know, we'd, we'd have this, this program on in the background and we would have a ball. We loved this show. We loved doing it. We loved the, the characters that we played. Yeah, we were a family. I mean, I mean, the thing is we, we had a huge amount of fun. Like there was a huge amount of work to be done as well. So if you can have fun and, do, and work very hard, well, then you're on to a good thing. So, and that's what we did, you know. You have, to have, have, have to have kids. fun to keep the energy up. Of course. On long, long days like that, would, you know, it was, it was, uh, having J John there as a sort of uh, comedy patriarch <laughs> um, it was a godsend because it kept everybody's spirits up, their, their energy up, with, with, and, and that energy transfers um, into the performances then. When in doubt, get your balls out. <laughs> Words to live by. He mentioned, and I think you mentioned last night at the party, the countryside was sort of, everyone sort of looks at countryside as the one that was fun to make for whatever reason. Is that what a good one to make? Uh, yes, Eve, yes, apparently Eve has something to say. <laughs> or not. Countryside was, when we read the script, we were like, this is creepy. This is disgustingly sick. And that was the way that we knew the show was going to go <laughs> from that point. It was, it, I mean, to think about a little village in the middle of Wales where they eat people. Actually, I know a couple exists, of villages. That exist, doesn't it? New Tredega. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Pontypridd. Um, no, the, but yeah, it was creepy. And the characters, the development that was going on with the characters and also as us as a cast was really, really good because we were starting to... You know, we were hanging out a lot more and things like that. And can I just say, I hated being in the countryside. Just picture this, okay? You've got the, the most beautiful countryside. You've got the Brecon Beacons in Wales, and it is beautiful. And everybody's taking pictures, and it's beautiful. Just turn to John Barrowman, literally in a sleeping bag with an OK magazine like this. Ugh. I hate it. I hate it. I really didn't Get like me it. home. I think the thing with, with, with Countryside as well is that we're huge horror fans and it was the first time that we could get something that was really kind of blood and guts and, you know, really kind of... But the story was brilliant and the, and the, the lead character, who was the cannibal, he, he was just fantastic yeah, to amazing. do. amazing. The monsters were human as well, which was... A, which yeah, was which was more, tr more trippy, really, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And I think because we'd been kind of confined to the hub for months to get out was fantastic, you know, <laughs> just to kind of run around. That and Gareth David Lloyd knocked himself out with a barbell. Yeah, That's a big, a really a like a, a, a big huge bell where they go ding, the last orders. And all of a sudden we hear this in the bar. We're all sitting drinking, having a drink and this, and here comes guys, all right then, ding. <laughs> And he goes, do you think he's going to be all right, John? I went, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Just stick a tube in his arm and give him some beer. You, kn you, you know that wound I've got on my head at the end? Well, they actually wrote that in because of the barbell. <laughs> <laughs> that hotel in, uh, in North Wales now, the bar you were saying they've raised the barbell another <laughs> foot from the ground. I went, I went back because I, I actually got married there. And it, uh, for health and safety, they'd, they'd risen the, this bell that had been in the same place for years and years and years, another three foot, so nobody could uh, give themselves a concussion on it again. Yeah, we had a good time there. And that's all we're telling you. <laughs> well, we're going to open it up to questions in a, in a few minutes, so if everybody wants to get queued up and everything and, and ask uh, our panel some questions. I will uh, ask, though, from cold Welsh countryside to uh, sunny LA beaches for Miracle Day, what was... I assumed you liked those outdoors, John. Was that nice? I like what? Those outdoors, as in, as in Oh, no, no, listen, I, I don't mind the outdoors at all, but right. what I don't like is to freeze my ass off. Right. You know, I like to be warm, but yeah, it was, it was nice. Um, L.A. Yeah. We were, you know, after uh, Children of Earth and, you know, obviously losing Gareth uh, from the show, and we know that the fan base really loved him, and we know they still do, and uh, the fact of the matter... You know, and Eve and I had said, you know, we've, we're, we're, we, were, we were so excited. Yeah. The fact that Torchwood was becoming international and we were going to be, you know, sharing it with stars and the BBC and we were moving on to some new territory and new characters being introduced, you know, everybody had mixed opinions and mixed feelings, but the fact of the matter is, for us, Torchwood was being kept alive. 
and it was being made, and we were proud of it, and it was a new realm for us. We loved being in LA, didn't we? Yes, we, we did. did. It was a great time. We had an amazing time in Mackay, and uh, Alexa, and uh, everybody, uh, Arlene, tour, and all, everybody else who was involved were contributing to it. It's all right for it. some, isn't it? <laughs> the what? It's all right for some, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was fun for us, and it changed, again, the face of Torchwood right. a little bit. One last question before to throw it on the, just to get it off on the record, what is the future of Torchwood as far as you know? <laughs> Torchwood, it's kind of in limbo. And I'm only repeating what Russell said in an interview in the BBC. He said, uh, you know, the BBC never cancel anything, therefore it could come back. It could be one year, it could be five years, it could be a TV series, it could be a movie. Um, but having said that, if we would have sat around for the last two years, we would have been unemployed and bankrupt. Um, like everybody, we have mortgages to pay. We have uh, you know, bills to pay and stuff like that, so we had to go out and do other things. And uh, um, Eve is just uh, in a new big series in the UK on the BBC, which it launched yesterday, the promos, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the promos started yesterday, but it's, it actually airs next month. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm in a nurse's outfit. Nice. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, so we all had to, to, to do our thing. And, uh, you know, Gareth went off on did uh, music and, and travels music, around. Hobby City, yeah. Warehouse 13. All stuff, right? You know, I'm doing Arrow. I'm going to be. Uh, thank you all. Also, you know, going into a scandal and all different things. And there's something else big coming up that I can't talk about. That's a teaser. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Uh, so yeah, so we, but if Torchwood comes back and whatever year we go into, whether it includes two of us, one of us, three of us, we would all do it, wouldn't we? Yeah. Good to hear. All right, let's, let's take the first question right up there for the night. Hi. Um, so John, I'm wondering, for when you had to meet the actual Captain Jack, like the person that your Captain Jack stole his name from, how do you prepare for that role? And like, is there any stories you'd like to tell? Well, I'm, I'm you know, these guys know it, that I, and, and they're the same way. We do our kind of w homework before we come on to set because we don't like to waste the time doing all of that. Oh, I'm just gonna breathe, oh, I gotta feel it. And, uh, piss off, just say the lines, hit your mark, and that's it, right? Know what you're supposed to do. Um, we uh, uh, were kind of in the moment, kind of things that happen and we just deal with it. Uh, I didn't really go do an extensive amount of preparation for that, but I did talk to, you know, when, the, when the, the gentleman who was playing, the, I forget his name, who played the real Captain Jack, he actually, in the sequence where we kissed and uh, we did that whole dance, after it, he had to go sit down because he was streaming with tears. And I went over thinking, oh my God, did I, did I put my tongue in? Did something offend him? <laughs> Because he, you know, he, 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 he was, he's straight. And so I thought, I, you know, I'm really very conscious of that kind of stuff, except with Gareth. <laughs> I've known him for too long. But I'm very, I'm very conscious when I'm, you know, working with people that, you know, I don't want to go step over the line. But he was crying, and I went over to him, I said, are you okay? Why are you crying? And he said, because I, I want you to know that my uh, brother had uh, taken his life a few years back, and if he had someone like you, to look up to, maybe he wouldn't have killed himself. And he, so he was really uh, living that part at that moment. So for me, that's a really great episode. And uh, I know what is happening in his head and what's going on in my head, but it's a, it's a really a beautiful piece. It was lovely. Next right there. Hi, um, I was just wondering, James Masters was on uh, your show, and I was wondering, how was it working with him, and is he a good kisser? <laughs> well, well uh, we got the script and to have James was, it was a huge, huge kind of tick for, for our box because he's such a huge star. And, um, and what a great character that, that, that guy was. He was fantastic. And, and I read in it that I was handcuffed to him for like five scenes. I was so made up. <laughs> um, so um, I had a little kiss with him, you know. He's lovely, and he's a—he was just—he's just a fantastic actor to be to be playing opposite. He was—he was wonderful. One of my favorite lines is um, "Into the lift, I candy." 
from. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great fun to work with. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a he's a, he's a good kisser. He didn't like my stubble. <laughs> And I remember him being very nervous about it. And when we did the kissing sequence, when we did that sequence, his girlfriend was sitting in the corner. And when he finished kissing me each take, he walked over and he would make the shit out with her. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. I'm like, now I'm kissing two people. <laughs> but he was, yeah, he's good fun. James is a great guy. Yeah, he's and we were really brilliant. lucky to have him on the show. Yeah. Right there. I wanted to know what was the scariest episode for each of you individually on Torchwood? Did you say scariest? Yeah. That would have to be countryside, definitely. To be, to be in or to watch? Countryside. Both, both, both is good. Countryside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Countryside. Yeah, countryside, I'd have to say, because when we, again, when we filmed that sequence in the, la the last one where everybody's in the kind of meat room, yeah. it was pitch black. Seriously, the cameras were on a level where they could see what was going on, but we couldn't. So when we were filming it, we were, we were pooping our pants. I mean, they were, I had to drive through the wall, but I, you know, they'd, they'd call cut, and then I'd hear, John, John, where are you? And I'd walk to go, Ugh. Ugh. It just gave me a chance to grope people. And then, I, then you'd hear this, John, 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 you'd hear, John, get your hand off me. <laughs> That's not the doorknob, John. <laughs> Sorry. I think, I think the, the scariest bit of it for me was, was sitting opposite Owen Teal. Of, um, when Gwen asks him, why did you do it? And he just, he just <laughs> leans into her ear like that. And he just goes, because it made me happy. And I, and I remember going, I, I literally hate you. <laughs> I'm never going to sleep again. They actually, cut, they actually cut the script, didn't they? Um, the, the, the young guy that gets rescued at the end in, in that episode. Uh, initi in, initially, that we were supposed to meet me, uh, my character and his character were supposed to be strung up by our feet. Yes. And um, Owen Teal was supposed to cut, the, cut this boy's throat, like, like li literally bleed him out like an animal um, in front of Yanto, who's hanging next to him. And then he goes to do it to Yanto, and that's when you were supposed to come in. But, but they cut it because they thought it'd be too uh, risque. But I think with Owen Teal's performance, it was violent. Everything was in everything was in in, in him, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, you didn't and really need didn't need that scene. It's just incredible. Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right up there. Uh, hi, I was wondering if you could go back to the hub and steal or take any object from it. What would it be? I, I don't have to go back. I've already stolen stuff. <laughs> I'll have to go and check my wardrobe. <laughs> what did you take? I took the table. I've got the stopwatch. <laughs> I have the book that Jack always read whenever I had to do fill what I called filling sequences when someone else was doing a scene out there and I was in my office. I read this little the book. It's a sci-fi book from the 1950s and I kept reading it and I took it amongst other things. Like what? <laughs> like the sofa. <laughs> the, <laughs> the big drain opening, you know, I took that. This stuff required help, like, <laughs> exactly. It's all in my house in Wales. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that, yeah. Stole stuff. Next. Right up there. Hi. Um, Torchwood was a lot doctor, lar darker than Doctor Who in its like stories. I was wondering if that was you think that was a consequence of it being set on Earth that Earth stories are often a lot darker. You kind of just answered the question there for us. Okay, so you're saying Doctor Who's, uh, Torchwood's darker, do, are Earth stories darker? What do you think? Well, I think, <laughs> I think when you've got, <laughs> 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 
I'll tell you what I think. Oh, no. <laughs> That's darker. Sit down. How's that for darker? <laughs> I want to go home. Do you Ow. see, have you any idea what it's like to work with this man? For six years, I was happy. I had a career. I liked myself. Uh, yeah. Do you think they're darker? That's Gary? why it was darker. <laughs> right there. Because <laughs> he was the central character. Question <laughs> answered. Uh, I think Doctor Who hits on a lot of things. <laughs> you can't go serious I know. now. Yeah, I got to. I feel bad that we haven't answered her question. <laughs> Doctor Who, I think, hits all that stuff, but in a different way for a family audience. Because Doctor Who in Britain is a family show. Yeah. And Torchwood was always on after 9 o'clock. So if you were uh, under the age of, uh, I think it was 13, 14, you weren't really supposed to be watching it. But um, so we hit on darker subjects. We were kind of the more of, for the, for the adult, really. So, yes. It's, it's an interesting point what you, what you made about it being, being on Earth. Because I, I think to, to sort of enhance that darkness, Russell you know, purposely put it on Earth. And you know, he, he, he wrote real people with real flaws, you know, humans that are an audience could relate to because you, you know they weren't perfect they were they were, they were people you could recognize uh, from everyday life and i think that that, that really uh, that helps with the darkness as well and i think i think with that particular um series you don't get to see the actual four five six until right at the end and it's the actual scary moment of that and the most terrifying and disgusting part of it is what the government plan to do is what the human being plans to do that's the sick thing so I hope that's, I, please, 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 God, let that have answered that question, because... Are you happy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sit down. Next. Next. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering, how many things can you actually do with a stopwatch, and have you counted? How many what? How many things can you do with a stopwatch? We're still doing them, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that, that stopwatch is looking pretty tatty at the moment. Um, I just let him take the lead when we would do that stuff. Yeah, no, there's lots of things. That was a, one of the little quirks with uh, Yanto and, and uh, uh, Jack. And uh, I don't know if many of you noticed also, but he had the stopwatch. But in some of Jack's outfits, I had the chain and the stopwatch that I kept, which was my little connection not only to that, but also to the Doctor Who stopwatch and all that kind of stuff. And it was actually, it's actually my grandfather's watch that I use. So I always have that with me. Oh, that question right there. Thanks. No, Lady in the dress. Thank you, thank you. I just want to ask about the stage makeup that you used, especially with the weevils. What was it like just walking down the hall and you would see actors that with weevils going by? You have to mention the weevils. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was always weird. I mean, we used to walk from our from set to the trailers, and we'd walk, pa you know, because Doctor Who and Torchwood filmed in the same building, so we'd have to walk through the TARDIS to get out of the building, and we'd be like, hey, David, what's going on? And they'd be filming something, we'd be walking through, what's up, where are you going to now? Oh, Planet 52, great. Um, and then we'd walk out, and there'd be a Cyberman standing there having a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, there'd be an ood kind of stroking his ball. So it was one of those kind of days, and then we'd go back and we'd have our chicken and chips while we were sitting across from, you know, something else with a, some bang looking at you. Smoking. Going, smoking, <laughs> yeah. The weevil smoked a lot. It was like that. Yeah. You'd have uh, one of those cigarette holders. Cigarette holder, because it's the only way they could get it to the, yeah. to, to the real mouth behind the mask. Holder. It was like. The best were the Daleks, when you'd go and you'd sit the Daleks, because the guys inside the Daleks, the, the tops would be taken off, and they'd be sitting there and go, hey, -ya! Like, all right, did it, great. It's a lunchtime. Yeah, got my lunch here. <laughs> Exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Having a good day? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs>
Next question. Right yeah. Okay, I cooked this up at university this past semester. Um, has Captain Jack Harkness been to the planet transsexual in the galaxy of Transylvania? <laughs> has, is, is this fan fiction? <laughs> nope, we were watching Rocky Horror after Rocky watching Horror Torchwood, and that's just Rocky kind of Horror what happens. Rocky Horror Show. Oh. I don't know, maybe he should go. <laughs> I have been known to put on high heels every now and then. Yeah. I think you'd be a good Frankenfurter. I think I would. Yeah. I'm a good Frankenfarter. <laughs> yes, you are. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, who knows? Never know. Great. Right up top. Okay, this question is for Captain Jack. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes, I just called you Captain Jack. Um, it was most recently announced that you were hoping for a Doctor Who spinoff featuring you and River. Um, if that doesn't happen, but Torchwood does indeed come back. What do you say the chances that River appearing on Torchwood would be? I, well, listen, I, what you're saying was it was announced. That was uh, some web thing picking up on something that Alex Kingston and I said off the cuff. Uh, so it wasn't anything that was factual because she and I were actually saying, wouldn't it be great if River and uh, Jack met up at some point? Uh, but that probably will never happen. Um, you can see us meet up on Arrow as different people, uh, but, uh, you know, who knows? It's not up to us to decide who's in the shows. It's up to the writers, the producers, the BBC, and as far as I know, uh, I don't think that if, if River saw, I don't think their timeline, well, their timeline could pass, but I don't know if it would be in Torchwood. Did that make sense? Uh, yes, in a timey-wimey sort of sense it yes. did, yes. Who's next? Who is next? Do we have any more questions at all? If we have no one right there, there we go. Great. Hi, so John, I love your singing. Listen Thanks. to all of it. Thank you. And I was wondering if because of that, you ever started singing on set all together, and if so, would you guys mind singing oh. something? Oh, yes. We're, we're <laughs> Was there a day where John wasn't singing on set and where everybody else didn't eventually join in with him? No. There wasn't Oh, wait, day. someone's calling me. Hold on. Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm sitting in front of about, what, a thousand people? <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Say hello to them. Not you, shut up. <laughs> Scott? Scotty? Say hello to them, go. I mean, it's, I'm here, so speak your point. <laughs> He's laughing, I'll call you back later. Okay, love you, go put on the jock strap, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, we'd sing. Yeah, a lot. Do you remember this? A lot. Hey, everybody. I wrote a new song for you. No, 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 mm -hmm. no, no. I have to go now, cause Naoko <laughs> can't remember her lines. I, <laughs> Jay Masters wrote that song. He came in one day in the makeup I trailer and sang it all for us, and it was about Naoko forgetting her lines during one of his scenes. And, and having to act in the rain. And yes, yeah. and having to act in the rain. Yeah. God, I don't know how you guys do it. You're always acting in the rain. It's Frickin' whales, it rains every day. Yeah, but, but like, like we were saying earlier on, you, 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 need, you need energy to keep, to keep the spirits up, to keep the energy for, for, the, for, the, uh, um, for, for the scenes, and singing's a good way of doing it, isn't Eve's it? Eve's got a great voice. <laughs> Why did it do Pamela Plastic Pamela Hip? Plastic Hip. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Please do, Pamela! I beg you! I'll pay your child schooling for the rest of her life if you do this. <laughs> so please, do have a little I'm begging you. I am so begging you. Oh my God. Eve used to do this. We all do our little character at Billy Bots. Burn would do Timmy Tin Legs, and Timmy Tin Legs walk like this. We're really politically incorrect on Torchwood. I'm warning you now. And then. Eve did Pamela Plastic Hip. 
<laughs> and Pamela Plastic Hip was really confident. And she used to audition for me every day. D do an audition. Please? Do an audition. Please? Am, I act am, I, am I here? Am I actually here? John used to sing a lot on set. <laughs> do it. No, I, I really can't. I can't remember how it went. Anyway, yeah, there was a lot of singing, a lot of dancing. Look, look, look. Look, I'm not doing Pamela Pratt. All right. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Pamela? 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 Pamela, oh. what song are you going to audition with today? I'm actually going to sing. What song are you going to audition with today? Pamela? I can't do it. I can't do it. Pamela. Can you do, can you audition with Grease? Name, agent. I got chills, they're multiplying. <laughs> Here she comes, ladies and gentlemen, Pamela Plastic Hip. Hi, Pamela. Um, come on sorry, in. Sorry, sorry, can you give me a second, please? Okay, all right. She's a bit of a diva. Hi, hi. What are hi. you going to sing first today? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just doing a bit of breathing. I'm a bit nervous to be here. Don't be nervous. You'll be fine. <sighs> okay, okay. It's really fine. I'm, l I'm looking for a new leading lady. Okay, thank you so much. That's great. Okay. And uh, are you going to sing the song from Greece that you said you were? Oh, okay. It, it's, it's actually the one about the stars. Stars. Yeah, this, I just want to tell you this means so much to me. Okay. <clears throat> okay. In so your I own just start whenever I, whenever I want. In your own time. In my own time. In your own time. Could have been someone. I could have been anyone. I. Sorry, sorry, shall I start again? That's okay, just make sure you get to the up tempo bit and we'll get a five, I, six, seven. There you go, that's I it. I could have been. Career over. Pamela Plastic Hip lightened up our day every day. And God love her. She is confident and she, she saved us. She saved asparagus us. So many times. Man. Asparagus man. Asparagus man. <laughs> asparagus man. Asparagus man. Asparagus <laughs> man. I've got no problem. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, good. <laughs> Come on, asparagus man. Come on, asparagus <laughs> man. Come and have a seat, asparagus man. It's good, you're in season. Now, and we'd be filming like, you know, someone on the table just died, and we're filming this heavy sequence, and Pamela Plastic would come out. And asparagus man would be there, and I'd get naked. Welcome to Torchwood. <laughs> Oh, I miss it. I really miss it. Welcome anyway. to Torchwood, indeed. Uh, that is all the time we have today. Can we give a big hand for Gareth David Lloyd, Eve Miles, and John Barrowman? <laughs> Thank you.